welcome to the DL, the podcast show that talks about everything to do with truck repair and diagnostics for the heavy truck and construction industry. I am your host, Tyler Robertson, CEO and founder of Diesel Laptops. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the DL. I am your host, Tyler Robertson. I am also the founder of a company called Diesel Laptops, where we talk about everything to do with diagnostic repair. So today I have a guest. It is one of our very own. So Alan, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's good to be here. So Alan, let's just give a high level. What what are you? What's your title? What are you in charge of here at Diesel Laptops? Yeah, so my name's Alan Morgan. Um, I'm the product manager of our uh, diesel wiring or the wiring diagrams that we make here. Um, yeah. So you've been here, well, how long have you been with the company now? Is it three years-ish? It's, it'll be three years in July. Okay. I knew I knew it was coming up here. I, I, have, a, I have a vague idea of when people start here at the company. <laughs> so at least I was in the ballpark with you. Uh, but you didn't you didn't come here to do diesel wiring, right? Right. Where, where right. did you where did you start at diesel laptops and what was kind of your progression through the company? So I first started in the warehouse and fixing laptops. So I was helping, you know, ship orders and fix broken laptops and that kind of stuff. Um, and then from there I went to our production team and, you know, helped install the software and get everything going for customers and get everything out the door. Yeah. So one of the things I love about diesel laptops, what we've been able to do is is oftentimes we got the right people. They're just on the wrong seat on the bus and we, we got to get them on the right seat of the bus. So it was really cool to see someone like you that basically came from, you know, warehouse and production side. And then we said, hey, we want to go make wiring diagrams. So do you remember when we had that conversation about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, went, I came into your office. And you were like, so thinking about starting this this new department up and it's going to be making wiring diagrams. Basically, you said, do you think you can do it? And I was like, uh, well, I don't know anything about that, but <laughs> I'll figure it out, you know. And I think that's around the same time that Dustin came in. Yep. So um, Dustin kind of helped me get started, showed me what was what. And I remember I would make like – so many different rough drafts of does this look good? Is this okay? Does this make sense? And uh, I would go back and forth with you and him until we finally kind of had something we liked. Um, but yeah, that's kind of how it all so, started. So when we first started, it was just you. It was just me, yeah. right? And then you know, let's kind of fast forward a little bit and talk about where did we? At one point, you had quite a few people working for you, mm-hmm. and now you have less than before, right? Um, what I guess to kind of talk about the the peak there of what we had and and where you're at today and and why are there less people than we had previously? Yeah, so at well when it first started it was just me, um, and then I I think I ended up hiring about two people. So those two people are actually still with me two years later. Um, but at the peak there we had about thirty to thirty five people that were, you know, making these wiring diagrams for us. Um. And since then, we've scaled back to between 20 to 25 people. Um, and that's basically because we've been able to figure out and streamline processes a little bit better and how to be more effective with less people, basically. Um, so, and we're still put outputting the same amount of content. Yeah. So, so I, I think it's interesting because a year ago is when we kind of brought JB on. JB's our vice president right. of strategic initiatives, right? right. And he's really a, a process guy. Yeah, yeah, he's been great. So we actually brought in um, so one of our one of our strategic partners brought in some resources to help us figure out process mapping, mm-hmm. right? So do you remember? It, it's really crazy. I look back a year ago. If I would have said, Alan, what does it cost us to make one page of wiring diagrams? You'd have looked at me and been like. I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah it, it's It's been pretty crazy how organized, I guess, we've gotten since then. Um, now, with, with JB's help and all these management system trainings we've been doing, we can basically br- break it down. Like, if, if I'm looking at a diagram, I can be like, all right, it'll take me this long to make it. It'll cost this much and things like that. 
Yeah. Um, it's actually amazing when you have to put a process together on a piece of paper, every mm -hmm. little step. And then I remember us doing like the swim lanes with the processes and everything. And a lot of managers started at the same time. You just happened to be ahead of them by about a month or two and really, right. and really getting it figured out. So when we first went through that process, did anything surprise you on how much things were costing to do or how much time things were taking to happen? Yeah, not so much the time. I knew that it was, you know, kind of a long process to do it, but the amount of money we were spending was kind of mind blowing. It was like, man, I really need to figure out how to reduce this cost, you know, because um, it's, it's a lot of money that we put into into this department. Um, yeah, so it, it blew my mind. Well, and then the crazy thing is, is we we spend literally, I think at the peak there, we were spending almost 80 grand a month just in wiring diagrams. Mm -hmm. And what do we do with it? We give it away for free. <laughs> right. That's the thing. It just, you know, we put it in the knowledge base for free. Um, we did recently start diesel wiring, yep. um, which is free for right now until I think the 18th yep. is the, the date on that. Um, you know, trying to help the uh, industry with all the coronavirus and stuff that's going on. So, um Yep. So we, we did just launch dieselwiring.com. Mm -hmm. I know we haven't made an official announcement yet. It'll probably be out by the time this episode airs. But if you go on to the, uh, the Google Play Store or the iTunes Store and just search for diesel wiring, you can download the app on yep. those. So the traditional model um, is that you can go on there and download two free two diagrams a month at no charge. Right. Right. And then after that, you have to pay a monthly fee to get unlimited downloads. And right. I, what do we have the monthly fee at currently? I think it's forty nine ninety nine. Yep. Um, it's, it's it's actually a pretty good deal in both sense too, right? Because if if you're a guy who only needs one every so often, right, you can you know just go on and get it for free. Um, but if you need something well, every day, for for from my side as the guy that's spending almost a million dollars a year developing wiring diagrams, fifty bucks a month sounds pretty cheap for the people <laughs> that are actually out there using it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So so explain to the users. You know, and the listeners and viewers and everybody out there, mm -hmm. I think not all wiring diagrams are are created equally, Definitely right? Definitely not. And you started looking through some of the OEM stuff. And, you know, as an outsider kind of coming in and looking at, hey, here's how CAT does their wiring diagrams, and here's how Aftermarket does theirs, and here's how Cummins does theirs. What were some of the differences or some of the big things that you saw? Because you want all ours to look exactly the same. Right, right, right. That's the big thing with us is to make it as easy to understand as possible. Um, so they all look the same across all manufacturers. And that um, was one of the biggest challenges for me starting this whole thing and, you know, continuing to do it was that all the OEMs are different, right? So Cummins, you know, their diagrams actually are pretty nice, easy yep. to read, look good. Cat. We can rail on cat a little bit. <laughs> not, not so much. Um, you know, then when you get into more of the off-highway world, um, like Takahoochee and those kind of manufacturers, those are really, I wouldn't say difficult to understand, but you have to take some time to figure out what's going on well, here. It's tough. If you're in an independent repair shop or you're mm -hmm. a fleet and you're trying to work on Freightliners, Peterbilt's, Cummins, Detroit's, Allison's. It's tough to get right. all that wiring and electrical information on one platform and then in, having it easy to read is a whole nother thing. Yeah, exactly. Because um, I'll, I'll sit there and that, that's all I'm doing, right? I'm not in a shop, you know, trying to get something fixed. I'm just reading the diagrams, trying to figure out what's going on. And sometimes it, it, it takes a minute to figure out what they're trying to say and, and not conveying it. Well, I guess. Well, and I even know you went through on all of ours you, beautiful symbols on on all the all the you know different things that need to be on there, the components. But I even know you went through a couple different iterations of that when you're first figuring it out because mm -hmm. things need to be right and they need to be accurate for people. Yeah, we're we're constantly updating them. I know that's been kind of a a thing for you as well because <laughs> you're like, all right, version number four of the same one. But we want to make them. We want to make, well, for number one, we want them to be right and yeah. we want them to look good. And you know what you're looking at, like you said, with the symbols. Um, so if you have a boost pressure sensor, we want you to be able to look at that sensor easily and quickly identify it and know what you're looking at so you can, you know, yep. find the wiring for it. 
So you have a team now of about 20 or 25 people working for you. Mm-hmm. Again, down from our peak, but your your output's still the same as it was with 35 people, which is great to see from my side on the on expense and efficiency side. Right. What are some of the backgrounds of some of these people you have doing these things? Um, I have a lot of electrical engineers, actually. Um, a lot of electrical engineers are working with us. And the good thing about it is they've been through this whole ride with me. You know, some of the people that started with me two years ago are still here. Um, you know, driven, hardworking people, willing to learn along with me, you know, because we're constantly still learning, um, you know, and taking feedback from, I've been working with Dustin and Scott a lot on figuring things out and Travis and Mark, some of our off highway guys trying to, what's, what is this? How do I make it easier and, you know, streamline that process. So one of the great things at Diesel Laptops, although, again, people think we're a diagnostic tool company, right? Mm-hmm. And th- that is definitely the heart of what we are. But what I go back to is what we're trying to create, right? Right. So we're trying to create, in, in, in order to fix a piece of tr- a truck or a piece of equipment efficiently, mm-hmm. I believe it's a multi-piece puzzle, right? What got us here is diagnostic tools. But you know what? Everyone's been selling diagnostic tools for a long time. Why have we been so much more successful than everybody else? And when I really take a step back and look at it, I think it's because one, tech support. Mm -hmm. We have diesel technicians, we have IT pros, and we bend over backwards to take care of customers. I think that's an important piece is having someone to call or phone a friend when they need help. Absolutely. Then they definitely need training. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned Dustin and Scott. Those are two of our trainers. Uh, Dustin's in charge of that program. He does a tremendous job. These guys are as talented as diesel technicians as you will find anywhere on the planet, right? These guys are, these guys are absolutely marvelous. Um, and then you have, uh, repair information, Mm -hmm. right? So when we talk about repair information, I have another podcast episode I I did about parts and vindicators. And the reason I brought you on here is because when I look at truck repair information, there's a lot of components people need. They need fault codes. They need wiring diagrams. They need component locators, which you do as well, which we haven't really talked about too much yet. They need labor time guides. They need remove and replace instructions and spec values and remove, you know, they they need a lot lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. And we have individual people. So you kind of roll up underneath that repair information division of our company. So I know you're kind of an outsider coming into the whole truck world and wiring diagrams world. Can you even... Do you have any idea how people even do it now today? Like independent shop that works on a little bit of everything. Do you have any idea how these guys even try to try to fix trucks? Well, I do know I'm in a lot of Facebook groups and I see a lot of, hey, I have this code. What do I do? I'm like, man, you, you know, these laptops could probably help you, you know? Um, It's like, basically you just look up your code. We have the step-by-step troubleshooting information. If you need a diagram, here's your diagram. Um, and go about it that Do you way. see him asking for wiring diagrams and component locator type yeah, questions? Yeah, yeah. It's, um, I, I guess it depends on the fault codes that they're reading from their tool. Yeah. Um, but a lot, it's either they need step-by-step or they'll need a, a diagram to figure out, you know, what goes where. So people are lost a lot of the time when it comes to you yeah. know, fixing their trucks. And it's hard to get that re- information out of the dealerships. They typically mm-hmm. don't want to do it. It doesn't really behoove them besides a goodwill gesture on their part. So if you're a random customer calling up your local Kenworth dealer saying, hey, can I have a wiring diagram? Probably not going to get it. Right. right? You, s- you see a lot of that too on some of these forums going around. It's like people come on asking questions about what what does this code mean? How do I fix this? And it's basically they come out and say on the post that they tried to reach out to the dealer and didn't get much help. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they're asking I, other sources. It, it's, super, it's super frustrating for everybody out there. That mm-hmm. big paywall that the OEMs and the dealers put up, Really, at the end of the day, they're all talking about uptime and we want our customers moving, you know, getting them out of, of the shops quick and keeping them running. Really, if they would if they would just kind of give away their information, <laughs> yeah. they, they'd win pretty big here. It definitely doesn't seem like they have the customer's best interest in mind a lot of the times. Um, they, they do until they don't need to buy a new truck again. <laughs> and then they don't really seem to care as much. That, that's my right. general impression, right? Um, and I, I understand it. They can't give customers free access to everything. Because then it puts their dealer's network in a horrible spot. Mm -hmm. So here we are in the middle of it then. So really there's that wall. And I feel our job at Diesel Laptops for repair information 
is to break that wall down brick by brick right. and just try to give people alternative access to repair information so they can fix other trucks quickly. So all those things we talked about, it really comes to me when I say diagnostics done right. That's mm-hmm. really been our company mantra and motto now for the last year, year and a half, because you need all those pieces and you're providing a very critical piece to that. So we've talked about wiring diagrams. Component locators we didn't. Can you, I guess, explain to everyone what a component locator is and why it's important? Yeah, basically it's a component locator would be just a, a picture of each view engine view, like each side of the engine, um, and showing you where the sensors are. Um, so we, you know, kind of break each engine down, have, you know, color coded with arrows pointing saying this is this sensor, this is that sensor. And uh, keeping track of like download numbers, it's kind of blown my mind how many people need these things to figure out, all right, if they look up this code and it says your boost pressure sensor or whatever, you need, you need to know where that is. So. Yeah. Well, it's amazing. A lot of guys start with the fault code when mm-hmm. they're fixing trucks and they know what it is. So they'll go buy it. And then they literally like hold it up to the engine and they walk around the engine <laughs> with a flashlight looking to see where that sensor is right, supposed to be right. on it. So those component locators, they're not quick and easy and cheap to make, mm-hmm. uh, but they do really help people fix their trucks more efficiently yeah, at absolutely. the end of the day. And I, th- I think that's what it's about. Mm-hmm. So the real cool thing that we're doing here at Diesel Laptops is we we kind of built all these things in silos, right? We had one thing, we had wiring diagrams, yep. then we had component locators, we had labor times, we had move and replace instructions. And I think now that we've all been talking and kind of building these things up, I think there's a huge opportunity here for us to start merging things together. Yeah, that's something we've kind of recently started, you know, working towards. Um, and our, our departments have gotten better at communicating with each other and figure <laughs> yeah. out, all right, what are you working on? What are you working on? So we're we're doing better at getting on the same page to put everything together. So it's like, all right, you have this problem. Here is everything you need to fix it, no matter if it's, you know, step-by-step, step, wiring diagrams, component locators, labor time guides. You know. So the thing I'm really excited about is when I look at a wiring diagram, and great, we have a wiring diagram and it leads a person to either a part number or a, a, a junction somewhere, a circuit somewhere. And they eventually do need a part, though, to fix their truck right. a lot of times, right? Definitely. So then you look at, well, I got the wiring diagram that shows exactly where that wiring, how that wiring set up. We have the component locator that shows exactly where the component is. On the other side of the coin, I have truck parts lookup now mm-hmm. here at Diesel Laptops, which shows you all the parts that could possibly fit. And we have truck parts cross and we have our VIN encoder, Mm -hmm. right? Decoder and encoder. So now, now it's go time. Now it's like, Hey, how do we mash this up? So how do you see that working out when we go down the line with trying to integrate like truck parts cross and the truck parts look up with your stuff? I think it'll be a task to do, um, but it's not something that we can't do. Um, A lot of that information's there and, available for us we just have to integrate it together and on the back end basically and through different software means yeah i think you know a year ago if we would have said hey we're going to put a truck parts cross and truck parts in, and put the oem part number on every wiring diagram mm-hmm. we've been like that's impossible that can't be done right and now you look at it like i got all the pieces <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we just need to put them together yeah we've we've definitely we've already made a few examples i guess mock-ups of a few diagrams with the OE part numbers and they're um, more integrated and more interactive and it flows together. But it, you know, like you said, you can go to truck parts, look up truck parts, cross and put that in and get the part number you need. So, you know, if I look back at how the industry works today, you have somebody working on a truck and eventually they come to that point, whether it's through a physical thing where, Hey, that's leaking oil or it's broken or through a wiring diagram or a fault code, they need a part. And then the fun begins because now they got to stop working. They either got to make phone calls themselves or they go look up the part themselves or somebody else inside that building is tasked with doing that. Right. In any three circumstances, there is a huge time waste that occurs yep. in that environment. So it, it's really funny. I think a lot of other companies look at solutions kind of from a higher level and try to figure out what money they can make. We've never done that. We've always looked at it as what problem does the technician have? Mm -hmm. Because if we can solve that guy's problem, 
then we'll figure out how to make money on the back end of this whole thing. Exactly. Yeah. And that that's one big thing with me too in making our diagrams is customer feedback. Yep. And I've had a lot of great feedback so far um, from the website directly from customers saying, hey, I, d- I don't like the way this is being done or I like the way this is being done, you know, so we have a better idea of what people actually want um, so we can, you know, work on tying that into what we do. So on an average month, how many pages of new wiring diagrams and component locators do you think your team puts out? Oh, man. Um if we're talking about truck side, I'd say between fifteen to twenty thousand yeah. pages. So it's a lot. That's a big number. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big number. Um, but definitely, if if it's on the off highway world, it's going to be a lot less. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Truck side. It's, uh, so when people ask, "How good's your coverage? Like, what what are your wiring diagrams actually cover? How good is it? Mm-hmm. What what's your response to that?" Basically, for for heavy duty engines, we have everything. Um, medium duty, we're we're getting there. There's a few manufacturers that we we don't have all the way. Um, and heavy duty cabin chassis, we are pretty close as well. I'd say ninety percent of the way done. Yeah. So like internationals, all co- all done on there. Yep. What are some of the other OEMs you feel like you're ninety or hundred percent completed with? Um, a few models of Kenworth, a few Peterbilt models, a few Freightline. It's, we have a few models of everything, right? Yeah. It's just we don't have the full coverage well, for I, every model. And I think like you mentioned earlier, we've gotten good at communicating between departments now or mm-hmm. better. Nothing's ever perfect, right? But right. I do think everyone kind of gets an idea now like, hey, these are the important model trucks mm-hmm. and these are the important year range <laughs> that we want to focus on. We had a couple times we kind of went out to left field like, hey, let's go do these, you know, Hinos from the 1990s. And we're kind of <laughs> like, okay, nobody yeah. nobody yeah. cares. Let's go worry about 2016 Kemmer T680s. So right. Right. We've, we've done a great job as a company, I think, getting, getting in that aspect. So – um, with all that said, how much how much work do you think you have left in the future to do? Does it does it ever end? I don't think it ever ends. Yeah, you know, because say right now we finished through 2017, and then we start working on a different model or whatever, and then you know the next year comes out. So it it's going to be a never ending process, really. Yeah. All right. So Alan, what did I what did I miss here talking about wiring diagrams, and component locators? Anything I left out of the out of the mix here? Um, I think for truck side. That's pretty much everything. The off highway side's a completely different beast. I don't <laughs> yeah. even know if we want to go there yet. <laughs> but um, you know, we we have started um that side as well. Coverage isn't anywhere near as close as it is on truck, but we are working well, on it. Well, and they have hydraulic systems as well that you're right. tackling. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's not just electrical, it's also the hydraulic system. So it's it's a complicated thing right. going on with that whole that whole industry. But right. um, I think we're all learning what the popular models are. Yep. For that world as well, we got some really awesome clients off highway. For listeners and viewers that don't know this, off highway diagnostics is half our revenue now. Mm-hmm. So we're getting a really good idea of what's out there. And Alan, you alluded to earlier, we know what people are downloading, right? We're right. watching the most popular documents and the clicks and all those things. Mm-hmm. So we get a real, you know, as time moves on, I think we get a little more data and we're able to make a little bit better decisions. Right. And it's just right. one month after one month after one month. And that's the whole thing too, right? It's we everything we do is based off of what the customer is doing. You're, right. Absolutely. So how do you get feedback from customers? I know I know you got me in your ear and I'm sure major accounts. <laughs> I'm assuming maybe technical support or training. Right. Where um, where else? There's a few guys in tech support, some of the diesel techs over there that I talk to fairly regularly. Um, and then after the YouTube video we put out not too long ago on diesel wiring, there's a contact us button on dieselwiring.com and I've had some great conversations just through that um, because basically that goes straight to my email address and I can, you know, figure out what's going on and help them out that way. Yeah. So I think companies take two different strategies. There's some companies that say, hey, we're going to wait and release this thing until we're, you know, got 99% coverage and we Mm -hmm. think this is a beautiful thing the world can have. My approach has been different. (laughs) My approach has been you know what, let's go, let's go fast and hard and let's just release it with minimal mm-hmm. and just explain to people how much we're adding to this thing and how much we're doing to this thing every single month. Right. And people can go on there today and say, wow, you're missing coverage for this or that. You check back next week, it might be on there. Right. Right. And see, that's, that's a good thing if somebody mentions that we're missing coverage for that because that 
you know, somebody's looking for it. We need to do it. Um, so, yeah, your team does an absolute, absolutely tremendous job creating content, pushing content out. As a business owner, it's really great now being able to see, hey, Alan, if we give you this much money a month, what can we get in return? And we actually know those things now. Yeah, we, we had no idea a year ago. <laughs> so that's great to see. And I'm really excited that dieselwiring.com is out there. Mm-hmm. The mobile apps are live on the stores you mentioned earlier. As of, I mean, we're, we're here recording this episode now. We haven't done the marketing push. We will, I'm sure, by the time this episode comes out. And I'm sure we'll get a lot of users on that platform as time goes on. So we're really excited about it. Um, anyhow, I, I think we'll wrap up this episode here. And again, I just want to reiterate to everybody, dieselwiring.com, free uh, through the month of April, pretty much. Right. You'll be getting them unlimited. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is two free documents per month. And every month you get two. After that, you do have to bump up to paid membership. But check it out. Give us your feedback. We'd love to hear about it. And for all the other listeners on there as well, if you want to get in touch with me through the podcast, it's the DL at diesellaptops.com. That's how you can get a hold of me. Alan, just head to dieselwiring.com and do the contact us. Yep. Be more than happy to have those conversations with everybody. So with all that said, again, I will call this an episode. I really appreciate everyone's time. And just remember, it's just not diagnostics. It's diagnostics done right. Right.